Hi, I'm Matt from HockeyReviews.ca and this is the PGS XT1 catching glove review. So PGS sent me this whole set to do content on and to make videos and review them and give feedback. And this is the catching glove. I already did the blocker and there's the pad video as well. So we're gonna take a look at this and talk about it and see how it performs. Now the idea behind PGS, which I mentioned in the blocker video, but we'll cover it again. Their whole thing is they don't make gear. They get partnerships with companies that are made in Canada and the US. And they say they use the best quality materials they can get. Their whole premise is hockey equipment is getting more expensive and the quality is going down. So they want to kind of do the opposite of where you still have a good priced product while having the best materials possible. So we saw what was on the blocker previously. And to take a quick look at this, you can see like there's a tag of made in North America. And then on the inside, it says made by Kineski. So you can see right there. So this one is one of their partners, which is a, their equipment and some of their accessories are made by Kineski. This is the case for this glove. So there's some interesting features on this glove, which we'll cover in a second. But first, huge thanks to PGS for sending me this set to do videos on and to make content on. I will link them in the description, so check them out. So on to the most important thing of this glove, and that is the graphic specific. And obviously that's not a real thing, but it's just a joke. What we're gonna do is compare it to this one because obviously this is a matching set and we wanna compare how this matches up as well to the specific color zone. So obviously right now, if you're looking at this, I hope you can see where my first issue of complaint is. So this glove in its current form, if you're holding a catching glove like this and a blocker doesn't really match at all, does it? Even then like this, it doesn't totally match one-to-one. -one. I get there needs to be like this triangle somewhere, which I can't really picture. It's not like my favorite design and I talked about it on this one where I think it's kind of boring, but we're gonna use the blocker here because of what I kind of explained for boringness and for color zones. For this, they have one, two, three, four, five, six color zones, and it's all in one direction, which I find pretty boring. And you can't really do crazy designs. Like if it's one's cut here and you can switch them, you can make some interesting designs. This one is all gonna just be lines in the same way, which can be relatively clean. If that's what you want, that's okay. But you can't do some interesting things and like pick kind of little corners. You can only do like that corner and that corner and you couldn't really do anything over here. So as well as these two always being the same color makes that also kind of disappointing. Obviously PGS is a custom company and Kineski makes tons of custom crazy graphics. So I'm sure if you want to do this slightly differently, you could, but what do I know? I like this design and think this is kind of cool. Obviously it's not clean or anything, but I like all the crazy colors. This one, you really can't break it up at all and you have to kind of follow a pretty simple overall pattern. So I'm not the biggest fan of that. So I don't normally talk about customizers when I do these reviews, but I wanted to line up the catching glove and the blocker to kind of figure out why these weren't matching one-to-one, -one, especially like usually demo sets, people line those up. When I went on the customizer and I did the colors in the same zone as each other, you can see that they don't line up at all and there's some weird zones going on here the double red lines on the blocker show up as double whites and they're zone two when they're zone three on the blocker usually when you're trying to do kind of the little sections you kind of match them with one or the other you don't just go like left to right on the actual glove itself so kind of confusing there honestly it just doesn't line up right even if you do try to match the zones overall the glove doesn't really match the blocker it's pretty disappointing in that sense especially if you're trying to buy custom and make them look like the most matching set possible before we begin the review of all this if you want to support the channel and you're buying hockey equipment anyways you can check out the links in the description to hockey supremacy if you're in canada and pure hockey if you're in the u.s Clicking those links and making a purchase gives me a kickback so I can keep making more content and doing more reviews. Otherwise, if you want to support the channel, check out Patreon and buy me a coffee. Everything through there always comes back into the channel so I can make more content and doing more videos. Overall, it feels very similar to this 60 degree 590, but it's it doesn't feel like a one-to-one -one clone. It kind of feels like it has their own take on it, but overall the whole shape and everything and overall closure is honestly, it feels pretty close. As to show that closure, because just get that out of the way. We can see this is how it closes. So this is a game ready palm. And so you can see the closure right there. And overall it closes like a game ready palm for some companies. Now closure on it, cause then people always talk at baseball hand and fingertip closure. This is a thing where that's index finger to thumb, that's middle finger to thumb, and that's like middle finger there. So you can really close it like any way you really want, as you can see. And it, it'll just close pretty natural to how you want it because it's pretty broken in out of the gate. It doesn't have any of these bindings or anything here, like the cord through here to really stop the break angle from like going in any way. So if you really want, like depending on how you close this, you can see you can kind of mold that to your kind of overall shape and preference. And also because people are gonna mention this, the T doesn't close that great. I really didn't break it in. This came out of the box kind of the way it is. So I didn't make this any better, um, but we put a puck in there and 
It can come out, but it's hard. Like I said, I didn't break this in. I kind of left it the way it is. This tee does change a bit when you go like that and you kind of fold it because I was playing with it a bit. And when you fold it, it starts to close a bit better. So maybe this will break in a bit better, but overall not the greatest closure on that tee. And I have to call that out because I called it out before on gloves and I have to continue to call it out because that's not the best tee closure. I had no issues in terms of gloves popping out of the tee when trying to close it and using it. I actually caught pretty decently with this glove. So that tee never really had an issue in terms of actually using it itself, but I want to call it out because you can definitely see it in that closure. But again, this isn't broken in and if you clamp this, maybe it will work a little bit better, but it does just feel like there's some extra material here, which is kind of causing that gap where if that was a little bit shorter, it might be able to close a little bit better. Now, the interesting thing about this glove is actually on the inside of it. So we're going to take a quick look inside there and talk about it. But one thing I do want to call out before we do is the thumb. You can definitely see, and I definitely felt this, how this thumb kind of flexes. So you can definitely see this part moving with that thumb. And with pucks kind of hitting in here, I definitely felt that kind of flex and the ability to move that. Versus when you look at a glove like this, you can see that doesn't move at all like whatsoever and that kind of stays in place when you really flex it and really push it and this one is definitely moving a lot more compared to those other gloves so just a heads up on in terms of that but kind of right here and everything is a little bit softer than i have used in the past so when i was talking about the pgs glove and i filmed this review i actually said while the thumb piece is kind of softer the cuff itself was pretty stiff and even this one you can see a bit of flexing in it and I'll show the footage from the PGS one after this. So you can see how that one kind of flexes a bit too and the PGS one does look stiff as you can see here and I was in the comments here saying that this is actually stiff and the thumb part is soft. But what I noticed, and this is the first time I've ever noticed this in any glove that I've ever used is I watched a puck kind of push back the cuff and go through. And I have front footage from this and I don't always get front footage from all the gear I use. So it's kind of difficult to say and I didn't get the exact test from other gear, but I have tried kind of this cuff with puck test with the puck machine on like the CCM eFlex glove. On here, I noticed I thought I made a save when I was playing on this. I kind of looked like how'd that go in? When watching the front footage, you can see the cuff bend on it and you're seeing that footage now. So I wanted to call that out because one, I've never noticed this before with any of the gloves I've used. It will probably happen with gloves that have this style of floating cuff. It's just because there's nothing behind there, right? This part is eventually going to kind of push backwards as you can see even this one will flex and this is an nhl quality glove and you can see even this moves back so this is probably going to happen once in a while when you have kind of the cuff pulled away and your wrist isn't there to kind of stop that but this is the first glove i've ever noticed from footage where that happened so i want to call that out and i want to be honest with it so while i did see that thumb piece being softer the cuff itself felt stiff but this was the result of it so probably not the best result there but at the same time it's probably gonna happen with other gloves as well and i feel me just calling this glove out isn't totally fair in that regards but i saw it happen so i feel like i kind of need to talk about it we'll go on to strapping and this interesting cuff backhand strapping is very traditional you have that kind of slash guard right here piece right here to kind of open this piece up as well as the elastic gen pro piece right there which basically all companies have now i do like how this tab is a tabbed piece of gen pro here so you can do that undo it pretty easy so that's a nice piece right there we take that off open that up and then we have this piece right down here and you have kind of stitched in here quickly strap but nowhere really to put it you can kind of put it under here but it doesn't totally work that well it'd be nice if it had a piece coming out here and then it opens up like that so in here it has this very nice spandex material here on the back pieces that's super comfortable everywhere i really like that it's a lot softer than like the nylon back here it's super soft on your arms everything it feels great and then they have this black nash which also feels fantastic and this material feels better than what is on the, the blocker palm so i really like this and i wish they used more of it but you do have that kind of spandex throughout here as well that really nice material and then on the fingers which hopefully you can kind of see in there because there's like a little bit of gray in there I'm not sure if it's coming off on camera i hope it is but there is gray in there and that is kind of the sugar grip material in okay. there so unfortunately the way this palm is made because this is all kind of one piece all down here i really can't open this up all that much and to really grab in there but i'm hoping that you can see that there is kind of that sure grip type material in the fingers in there while well, this is all that nice black nash material here and you can see the kind of 
thick piece for padding on this cuff as well. And when we get on the fingers, you do have the adjustable piece right here to tighten those fingers. And you do have individual finger stalls for all of them, which I love. So you have index, middle, and then these two are one, but you have that pinky loop right here. So I love that traditional style there. And I'm a huge fan of that. And I know some companies are going away that's so nice to see that stay there. So this is where it is kind of interesting. So I can't remember if this is their mass system or what, but I think it's multi-adjustment system. So, or strap, multi-adjustment strap, something like that. I'll put it up there, what it is. So there's two places you can attach this, to here or to here. And the idea behind this, they said it can adjust like kind of the break angle of closure. And I don't believe it whatsoever. I don't really believe it does anything. And the reason I say that is because me putting it here to here doesn't really like actually bother me or change how I'm close this glove. I close it the same way regardless. So it doesn't really change the break angle or how it really feels to me. And it just is a kind of a custom option of which kind of place you want it and what one feels nicer to you. So I like how it does have that option, but it doesn't, it's not gonna change the break angle. The break angle is based on here and I showed you how you can kind of change it yourself, but it does have a natural way to do it. And that isn't going to really affect the natural way how it works. The next part about this, while this quick release strap, I wish it had a hole through it. It does actually work pretty well in terms of actually just tightening it. Where a lot of gloves when I try to pull the quick release strap, it doesn't actually tighten anything. And it just kind of like pulls upwards. This one does a really good job of actually tightening. So huge fan of that. You can't really do it like this though where you would pull it out. It doesn't really tighten anything. So you would have to do it on the inside. Kind of disappointed there isn't like a hole out here so you can yank it. But overall that quick release works very well. Now, one of the interesting pieces of this glove and something that uh, the person who started PGS or one of the people that started PGS talked about is this cuff system and basically how it's totally separate from the back end here and how it kind of flexes with you. Now, you can see on other gloves where this is kind of a, not the same, but it does the same premise of this doesn't come with you, but it just stays open. So you can move your hand back. This doesn't float with you. With this one, the idea is that the whole thing kind of floats with you. So you're like this and this kind of moves with you. But as you can see with me, it doesn't really actually ever move anywhere. It just kind of stays where it is. Now let's make this super tight to make this follow my wrist. And we'll probably see a little bit more here. So you can see that definitely does follow more here than what it would otherwise. One, this doesn't feel super comfortable to me. This just feels way too tight, but I mean, it's a personal preference. So if you do really wanna make that tight, it definitely does open up more. And you can kind of see it here, right? How that kind of sits down here and it goes like that and it does pull away from it. But that is only when this piece is super tight. When you loosen it off, like in a comfortable spot where I like it, it doesn't move nearly as much, but it doesn't get in the way either. So the cuff design is kind of overall pretty okay. And it does a pretty decent job there. Now I did notice it's getting away a bit in my crazy warrior arms, but they're the crazy warrior arms. So they're kind of getting in the way of most things now anyways. And I don't really blame this pretty open design overall of a problem with that. So, so the cuff is an interesting idea. Implementation is good when you really tighten it, but if you're not someone who really cranks this cuff, or this strap, I should say, then this doesn't really need to move away from the glove because it just, your wrist just moves naturally away from it. But when it is, it is an interesting design and a pretty interesting piece there and something unique that is on the PGS one. So I gotta give them credit for that. And it's definitely a feature that isn't bad. I do love how it has a traditional thumb and pinky loops. I do also like how it sits in the piece like this. This is very Vaughn-esque. 70 degree had the same design of this right here, but this actually has elastic with a Vaughn dance. So that's also kind of interesting, but I do love this overall design. And so you can tighten that and adjust that. Also another nice piece of these little thumb and pinky loops is it does have that black mash material that's right here. So nice to put that on that side as well. It's a very nice material, it's very soft and it just feels solid. So continuing on the T itself, it is pretty soft and it's like a pretty, you can see it kind of flexes like that. When you really stretch it, it does get smaller like that and it can kind of go in like that. Generally speaking, it's, I don't think you're gonna have a ton of issues with it collapsing like that, but it isn't like that double thick T. Again, you could probably order it custom to get reinforced T. This one isn't and just plays like that. As well, this is a double T design. So it kind of like that similar thing that I think Vaughn is doing where it all comes to one point right here, right? And then two here. So it's a double T, but it feels more like a single T kind of just split in the middle. But a lot of companies are kind of doing that now. So now we get to the puck test and it's actually pretty good. And I say it's actually pretty good because I have used multiple gloves recently that fail that test totally. And this one is sort of based on the overall shape of those gloves. This is kind of a 590 shape. But when you go on it, just the whole glove is flat enough. And like the T, I can really see the T part flattening out when you do this. 
that it really is getting in the way of the puck and the palm is also flattening out so it really gets in the way of the puck as well. So easy to pick up, easy to cover and no issues whatsoever when using that. Core Tech, which are core shorts and people have heard of these before. They were labeled under Under Armour before. Now Bauer sells hockey specific one, but Core themselves sell their own line of pants and supportive clothing and apparel. Basically this stuff helps you with growing strains, growing pulls and helps keep your hips tight and everything like that. And speaking of injuries, I kind of pulled a growing playing in the playoffs a few months ago and have had to keep using these Cortec shorts to make sure my growing doesn't get worse. When I don't wear them, I can feel and it hurts kind of to walk the next day with these. Keeps everything nice and tight and keeps everything from stretching out too far and getting injured. So these have been a huge savior for me. Check out the link in the description to their website and use my coupon code that's in there to get a discount and I'll put it on the screen here. It helps support myself and the channel so I can make you content and doing real reviews, but also you get a solid product that I use all the time. Now onto protection. And I did not do the puck machine test with this glove because this is the first glove in a while that I had to stop using when I was playing. And I talked to PGS about this, who talked to Kineski about this. I was specifically doing a bunch of training sessions, not training for me, specifically for the players. I'm basically just a goalie shooter tutor out there trying to stop them of junior B and junior A kids who are aged in grade 12, Canada high school, which is like I think 17, 18. And I took a bunch of shots right here that hurt so bad that my finger was bruised after I took it off. And that has happened to me in the past before, but sometimes you get a shot like that. These were not slap shots. These were just guys coming in and shooting and they weren't particularly hard. They weren't particularly remarkable and they weren't like one timers or anything like that. And they just got me like right in here and like right here as well, which that is the, where the, like right here is where the bruise happened. I felt it and it was very uncomfortable. I hit, I hit two shots in a row. Like, okay, that really sucks. I had two more shots that didn't go in my glove. And then the next one went in my glove and that one hurt as well. So, okay, I can't wear this anymore. I just don't trust this. And I don't think this is protective enough. Now this is a game ready. I told PGS my experience of this and PGS came back to me with weird cause so-and-so has been using this for six months without an issue. And then they also went to Kineski and Kineski told them that the glove I previously used, the Kineski glove I previously used, I didn't do videos on, but I, used it in games because it was a friend of mine this one is more padded than what that one was so the only real response i can give with that is i was playing against junior b junior a players here versus that beer league game i was playing probably didn't have as high as level shooters and they're not crazy high level shooters but they're pretty decent my leagues i play in now specifically the like the one league where my three teams play in there are shooters that shoot a lot harder than those junior b and junior a so that's really the only comparison I can give there. I wouldn't put this on the puck machine just because I felt those shots and it was that uncomfortable where I used the Eflex 6 581 Pro Palm and didn't have issues with those jun same Junior B and Junior A kids. At the puck machine, I did have issues at it. It was 65 miles per hour. So I didn't want to bring this into that test result because that puck machine hurts a lot. Like I'm not raising that level up to the 70s and 80s because I don't, I simply don't trust the protection in this glove. General beer league, you could probably get away with this. I know there's guys that I play with that use gloves that are around here in terms of protection. And then I also know that I've had multiple times this year where goalies have taken a puck in the palm or the shoulders and they got hurt and had to stop the game for like 10 minutes because they got hurt. I've never had that happen to me in terms of pucks. That's kind of the difference. Now, with that said, I do want to call out one thing. Now, this isn't totally broken in. So that's the closure of a game ready. And this is a closure of a pro palm. And I didn't do anything to break this glove in either. I just used it. And this probably has like 25 skates on it, probably. Maybe 20 skates on it. This one obviously has three. So this one will break in more, but that's a pro palm and it's closed pretty close to this from day one. I would expect for closure and stuff, this to be a little bit more padded than what it is. And it's kind of disappointing in that sense. From a puck saving and catching perspective for this, when I did use this, this glove felt really solid. I did use this in a shinny, which was nowhere near the level of those junior B and junior A kids. And I had, I had no issues catching it and just overall playing with it and I caught very well with it. I feel like this glove is just slightly different enough. You can see kind of the cuff differences that it doesn't totally feel like a standard like 590. If you like a 600 break, this is honestly like you could probably get away with this as well. And I kind of liked the shape of it. I liked the feel of it and I caught pretty well with it. And while it doesn't have like the steepest thumb angle here, you can see it's kind of like not super steep in there. The pocket isn't massive. I did find a lot of the stuff was kind of moving in there and I'm not sure if that's just the softer feel overall to it or what, but I did notice it was pretty easy overall to catch with and I didn't have a ton of problems with like trapping stuff with my body like this. 
and I didn't have problems with like shots where I didn't see type thing. It felt pretty good overall, especially for a glove that I'm not used to. So catching with it was pretty solid. And I had a great experience previously with Kineski gloves while the break angle is very different on that, or at least the glove feels very different than this one does. This one felt overall pretty decent for that and pretty solid as a whole. So that's about it for the PGS XT1 catching glove review. And I have to say like, it's a decent glove and it is $600 though versus the blocker, which is like a big step compared to the other ones. This is $600 and I'm pretty sure this one was $679. So when you look at those two price points with this, it's hard for me just not to say get this right because eighty dollars more when you're spending six hundred bucks. Yeah, there's a difference, but this is a better glove. You have like the padding here and everything, and it's protective. This is trying to be a little more of a beer league thing with more custom options and stuff like that. Maybe there isn't a ton on their website. They do have their customizer for the graphics, and that's kind of it. But it's made by Kaneski, who make a lot of ton of custom stuff. So I'm sure if you ask, you down a custom route for that. But I'm not positive. Now it's an okay glove. It's not breaking like boundaries or anything. The quality isn't way above everything else that I've used and felt and it just feels okay it honestly does feel like it's targeted kind of at a beer league level and not that kind of pro level so the price point being a little bit cheaper makes sense but it's not quite low enough where it makes a huge sense i can see in purchasing this versus i think the hyperlight 2 is 629 that my hyperlight 2 is way more beef than this it's kind of tough saying yeah this is the way to go for that i think this glove has like a decent foundation but definitely isn't the level of the things that they're trying to kind of compete against and they could definitely do things to definitely beefen it up and kind of fix some quality things like that t you don't want that t on a 600 dollars glove especially when yes it's more expensive but that's the t on a 679 dollars glove so you want like stuff like that to be different and you want to be better so hopefully seeing this stuff they can make changes and look at it and say okay how can we really adjust this to make it better and, and not just make an excuse of it i like the idea of what pgs is doing i like them getting manufacturers to use very specific build instances and kind of doing their own designs like this very interesting cuff so i like the idea behind pgs i hope they continue in the future and i hope the xc2 has some interesting changes and makes this glove stand out even more than it currently does thank you very much for watching this video hopefully Hopefully it was helpful. Remember, subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on Instagram and TikTok links in the description. Also, thank you to PGS and follow them as well. PGS Canada and PGS links to their Instagram and website are in the description as well. Check out the rest of the view for this, for the pads and for the blocker. If you want to support the channel and you're buying hockey equipment anyways, check out the links in the description. If you're in Canada to Hockey Supremacy, if you're in the US to Pure Hockey, clicking those links, making a purchase gives me a kickback so I can make more content and doing more reviews. Otherwise, check out Patreon, buy me coffee. Everything through there always comes back into the channel so I can make more content and buying more gear. Thank you very much for watching and take it easy. You're watching hockeyreviews.ca.